welcome back. It's Katharina again, and this is the barn session number three of Camp Evergreen's virtual camp activities. And so today we're gonna to be learning about the parts of the horse. So I have my wonderful assistant Rusty here to be my real life horse. And I also have my wonderful assistant Dudley here to be my label horse. So if any of you have ever done horse care or horse science here at Camp Evergreen, you'll probably have met Dudley. He has been around, I don't even know how long, he's been around longer than I've been coming to camp, which is a long time. And he has many of the different parts of the horse labeled on him. But the fun part is, is that all of his labels are Velcro. So normally I would be handing these labels to you, so that way you can come up and relabel Dudley. But since this is all online, I'll just be labeling Rusty myself. But I will also be telling you what these different labels and parts of the horse do. So, first off, we'll start with the pole here. The pole is not like a flag pole. It's this area right between his ears, if he can bring his beautiful ears this way. And it's where their spine connects to the top of their skull. And when you're riding them with a bit, and you pull in the bit, it puts pressure on that part of their head. So we have the forelock, which is like the horse equivalent of bangs. So some horses have short little forelocks like Rusty, some have gloriously long ones like Seamus, and some don't have a forelock at all, like Dusty. And so the forelocks just help keep bugs and dirt and things out of their eyes, similar to eyelashes for us. And then we have the forehead, and this is where the interactive part comes in. Can everybody please point to your forehead? Excellent. So just like we have foreheads, horses also have foreheads. I don't really know what the purpose of the forehead is, but it's there. <laughs> Next we have the face. And so horses have a long face. So horses, with their facial structure, it's different from ours because horses are prey animals. So you'll notice that their eyes are on the side of their head and so they can see almost 360 degrees around them with a blind spot right in front of their nose and also right behind them. Okay, next up we have the muzzle, which is this super soft little part of their face. They'll often nuzzle you with the muzzle, which is a great way for you to remember it. Then we have the chin groove, which is this little area right down here underneath their chin. And when they have a bridle on, the chin strap will sit there. Next we have the cheek, which is this gray part here. It holds all the food in their mouth so that way they can eat. Then we have the throat, which is all down here. They have a very long esophagus. And a fun fact about horses is that they can't throw up. So it's not like when your dogs or cats eat food that's not very good for them and they throw it up. If horses eat something that's not very good for them, it's stuck in their stomach or sometimes it's just stuck in their esophagus. So that's when we need to call the vet out to help clean everything out so that way they can remain healthy. Okay, next up we have the crest, which is this whole top part here of your horse's neck. So your horse's spine goes along here and then it dips down a little bit and runs up sort of in the middle of their neck. So the crest is all of the muscle and fatty tissue on top of their spine. Next we have the mane, which it's all on Rusty's other side, but it's all of their beautiful hair. So you'll probably notice that each horse's mane falls a little differently. And that's because some horses have legs that are shorter than the rest of their legs. So the mane will fall on the side of the leg that's shorter. Or it's also an indication of how bendy your horse is. So if all of the mane is on the right side, that means that Rusty is very bendy when he takes right corners, but not so much when he takes left. And then if it's on the, on the left side, it's the exact opposite. And some horses have it sort of straight down the middle with mane on both sides. 
and those horses are super bendy on both directions. Next we have the withers, which is this part right here. It's kind of like their shoulder blades, so this is also the interactive part. Everybody can touch your shoulder blades together. Excellent. So when you're riding a horse and you have a saddle, the saddle sits behind the withers. And if you're riding bareback, you also sit behind the withers. Otherwise, it will be uncomfortable for you and for your horse. Next, we have the shoulder, which is this area right here, and it helps power their legs. So can everybody point to your shoulders? Excellent. Then we have the arm, which is this part right here. So just like us, we have our shoulders and then our arms. Horses also have their shoulders and then their arms. Next, we have the forearm, which is this part right here. So it goes shoulder, arm, forearm. And that are all big muscles that help them move their legs and propel themselves forward. So up to this point, the horse's leg anatomy has been very similar to ours with shoulders, arms, and forearms. But this is where it differs a little bit. So now we have the knee. Now, do you have knees on your arms? Yes. No. <laughs> so, the horses have their knees right here. Okay, next up we have the cannon bone. So we have the shoulder, arm, forearm, knee, and then the cannon bone is right here. And if you've ever seen the movie Dreamer, which I don't know if you have, but it's an excellent horse movie. Um, the horse in that movie ends up breaking their cannon bone. And so that's where I know the cannon bone from. Okay, the next part of the horse's leg is right down here. Rusty, I know you just would like your leg, but I would also like it. <laughs> and it's sort of right here underneath their hairline. It's called the cornet band. And that part of the hoof is responsible for 70% of the hoof growth. So all of the new hoof grows from the cornet band down to the ground. And as I mentioned, this part, the cornet band, is right above the hoof, which is just like a big toenail that your horse walks on. Okay, and so this is the bottom of the horse's hoof. So you'll notice here there's this strange triangle. That part is called the frog, and it helps push blood back up the horse's leg because their heart isn't strong enough to push blood down and then also pump it back up. So the frog acts as like a tiny second heart to sort of push everything back up and it's also a cushion so that way when the horse is walking they're landing on there and it's sort of padding their steps okay the next part here is the pastern which we've just worked our way down the horse's legs now we're going to start working our way back up so the pastern is right here right over top of the pastern is the fetlock which is all of the little hairs down over here. Some horses have more hairs there than others, but they act kind of like eyelashes. And so they help keep mud and dirt and gross things away from the horse's hoof. Okay, the next part here is the elbow. So can everybody point to your elbows or touch your elbows? Maybe try to lick your elbows if you're super flexible. Okay, so the horse's elbow is actually right up in here. So it'd be the equivalent of being in our armpit which is a little strange. Okay, next we have the heart girth, and this is the only label on Dudley that has two words to it. It's like a compound word, but not quite. <laughs> so the heart part of this label is because the horse's heart is right here in the middle of their chest, and the girth is what we tighten on the saddle before you get on. So the cinch or the girth also sits right here. So it's where the heart is and where the girth is. So this whole area is the heart girth. Okay, the next part we have is the horse's back. Where do you think the horse's back is? Yeah, you're right. I feel like Dora. <laughs> <laughs> it's right along here. So it's where the top of their spine is and it's also where you sit when you ride a horse. If you sit somewhere other than the back when you ride a horse, it'll probably be very uncomfortable for both you and the horse. And then our next label here is the barrel. So if you were to cover up the horse's front half and also cover up their back half, their middle section looks like a big old barrel. For some horses, it's a lot more barrel-esque than others because some horses just love snacks more than other horses. Next, we have the flank, 
So now we've gone from the front of the horse to the middle and now we're finally moving to the back of the horse. So the flank is this area right here and you'll notice that all of the hair on a horse kind of goes the same direction, sort of like down diagonally to help water run off of them. But then when you get to the flank, the hair changes the direction and goes up. So that's how you can always tell where the flank is and it's also your horse's tickle spot. So if you ever need your horse to move over, you just kind of have to tickle them there and push a little bit and they'll move over. Okay, our next label is the stifle joint, which is right here. And so the stifle acts similar to the human knee. So it helps swing that leg back and forth. So next we have the dock, which is this part right here, sort of the muscle and bone right before your horse's tail. And so it helps move your horse's tail back and forth. And while we're speaking of the tail, the horse's tail acts like a... Yes? It acts like a big fly swatter. So in summertime, they can swish their tail all around to help get the bugs off. But the tail also is a way that horses communicate with each other. So if you see them swishing a tail at another horse, it's probably because that horse is bothering them and I tell them to go away, please. And then our last label here is the buttock. Everybody's favorite label. And so the horse's butt is where they get all their power from. So horses are rear wheel drive vehicles. They push from behind and they pull themselves forward from the front. So all of their power is stored in their hind end. And that's parts of the horse. Thanks for tuning in and for being interactive, and I'll see you next time.